See all this fine rock in here? Don't mess with that. Leave that alone. Right in through here, you see how large those are? This is, means it took a lot of water to move these rocks. So what I would do is I would trench it and see if I have any gold values whatsoever. Move these cobbles and stones out of the way and cut a trench this way. And then I would sample all the dirt I pulled out until I could figure out where that pay streak is at. And remember, there could be multiple pay streaks. Not only are you looking for the pay streaks that are going this way, you're also looking for the depth of the pay streaks because you might have a pay streak here, one lower, one lower. After you dig your trench and you find gold there, you're gonna come down here about 50 feet. You're gonna dig yourself another trench right there and you're gonna sample pan all that material and you're gonna mark where you're finding your gold at. And then you're gonna draw a line from that trench to this trench where you found the gold. When you're digging that material out, you're gonna lay it on the side of the trench and you're gonna sample until you can localize where that particular pay streak is and remember you might have more than one there could be several of them in there you'll go down another 50 feet you'll do another one i know it's time consuming and but it's very important because you could have three pay streaks up there and they all consolidate down here into one you want to get to where they all consolidate into one because that's where your richest gold deposits are going to be and i know you're asking that question is hey jeff you said dig trenches but you didn't say how deep you're absolutely right i didn't say how deep I'll dig anywhere from two to three feet. I don't want to dig more than three feet. You start finding gold that deep, that means you're going to have to remove a lot of overburden to get to it. And if you see gravel zones like that, sample, especially where the cobbles and the rocks are the largest and where they're sitting on top of either a clay layer or the next layer. Remember, your contact zones is where most of that gold is going to be, especially clay or bedrock. You can see I got fine, silty layers on top, and then I got smaller gravel underneath that then i get a silt zone in between there and then as you come down you got the larger rounded river rock below that so what i would do is i would dig this section out get down to the farthest layer and i'd sample where the biggest roundest river rock is at the bottom there and of course roots from trees make great gold catches too you've got to visualize this place with high water don't look at the creek down there think about when the water was up to here so what i'm going to do is i would check on the outside edges here in the gravel bars, I got gravels over there. I'm gonna check in the root systems down here and I'm gonna see if there was enough obstruction here to make the gold drop out, if there's any gold at all. That's the first key is being in a gold producing district. And then I'll climb up higher and check the bedrock of course and then I'll go down lower and see if I got any tributaries because sometimes the tributaries can be the ones that carry the gold in. All right, now we're behind this big old log right here. Looks like a big ripple on a sluice box, don't it? You don't want this light flow sand. Ain't gonna be no gold in that. What you want is super hard packed, heavy, round, black, shiny ones. You'll know they'll be super heavy. Here, I got root systems that are hard packed with gravel. I'm having a heck of a time getting it out, so I know that's a good sign. So I'm gonna dig in there first and see if there's anything stuck down in there. Remember, stay away from your flow sands. They ain't gonna have no gold in them. Make sure you bring a good digging tool with you and a good crevicing tool. You're going to need that out here, especially when you start getting into these hard packed rocks and gravels and conglomerate. You need something to dig through it with. The S ting will do the job great. All right, see that? A heavy dark rock. It's heavier than this base rock of granite. You can see I've got a whole bunch of gneiss in here. And then I have migmatite up above. This is the bottom of the waterfall. I got some gravel here. I'll dig a little bit out and see if I got there too. You see flow sand like this, you ain't gonna see any gold in this. This is all light. There ain't gonna be no gold. You want gravels like this where they've been consolidated and hard packed in behind these rocks. You wanna dig down as far as you can to where you get to an impervious zone like bedrock. And then check for there, because I can assure you when the water's coming down during flood stage, all this is boiling and turning and moving around. Just like in a fluid bed sluice box, all the gold's gonna drop to the bottom. It's not gonna be up towards the top. You need to get down as far as you can. That's why you need to bring the right digging tools. I've seen people do this a lot. They'll grab a bunch of flow sand, they'll pan it out, and they'll see what's called mica, brass mica. They see that in their pan or in the washes, and they think they got a piece of gold. And when you swirl that water, it'll float away. Gold is not gonna float away. And that's why you need your jeweler's loop so you can inspect it. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Here's a good example of that mica. Do you see it? There's a piece there, and there's a piece there. And there's a piece there, you see that? See how easy I can break that apart with my finger now? The problem is, is people see that and they get all gung-ho and excited thinking it's gold. Well, look how easy that washes away. If that were gold, it would stick right there in the pan. 
These are the type of black heavy rocks I'm talking about. They're going to be mafic in origin, which means a lot of iron and magnesium are inside of these guys, which makes them naturally heavy. You can't mistake them. They're dark and they're fine grain when you split them open. And when you try to break them open, it's going to be really, really hard to do so. So this is what you're looking for is a collection of these behind rocks or trees or some type of low pressure zone. Dig down below that and if you're in a gold producing district, there's going to be gold there. And this is a schistos rock here and reds are, are usually the sign of mineralization oxidizing out usually the irons like rust when you see rust so you see a lot of the basement rock around here which is granite and it's going to be mostly in the wash here but when you look up here on the sides you see a different type of strata i've got a lot of schistos rock right here you can see that i mean see how easy that crumbles away and that's where a lot of the mica is coming from that's inside of this creek here now if you look up above it, see how that's just crumbly and falling apart? I know that the roots are in there, but you see all that nice red in there? Right there, you see that? That means that there's been a lot of magnetite and hematite in it. And you'll tell because they'll start to oxidize. When they oxidize, obviously they turn red. And then you can see the bands of schist, schistos rock right in there. And then right there you can see small little stringers or veinlets of quartz running in there. You see that? And then there's your schistos rock, biotite schist. What you do is you dig that out, you screen it, and you pan it. If you see changes in the, the rock from what you're seeing in here, it's always a good indication that if you're finding gold, that's where it's coming from. That looks really good. Look at that. See that? I got stringers of quartz going through that schistos rock. And see how it's all weathering out any iron that's in there? Oh, that looks really good. Stratify that material. Now it's better if you classify, but I didn't bring a classifier with me. Break the rocks to the back. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. As you get down to the last of the material, go slow. Because the gold will ride on top of any type of hematite or magnetite. Look at that, just nothing but iron in there. You should mark down everything you find, everything you see, and write it on a topple map. Because if you start to find it, you really need to know exactly where it's coming from. I've seen a lot of guys go out and sample and forget where it came from. And also keep in mind that your sampling isn't just a one day deal. I've been on some programs that's taken me six months of sampling just to find out exactly what's inside the ground and the richest locations. But don't give up. Sampling is the key. It's basically your playing detective to find out where the best sources of gold are hiding at so you can come in during the right time of the season with bigger equipment so you can actually gold mine. So you've gone from prospecting to mining. And then you can extract a lot of gold because you already know where to go. And don't tell nobody either. Word travels fast. You come back next year and the spot's already taken. Another good place to look for gold is in these root structures here. See how they're all interwoven into the spaces of the rock, the country rock? The gold can get washed up into these root systems and the cracks and the crevices. Also check the moss. See the moss? Fine gold can get stuck in there. And it's a good indicator if there's any bigger gold in the area or if there's any gold at all. The old timers used to do that all the time. Check in these cracks. Get all this clay out right here. And that's what we're gonna do. Let's see what we got inside the gym. You take your mosses and you're gonna grind them up with your fingers. Like you're kneading dough. Now what you want is the bedrock running across perpendicular, not in the same line as the creek or the stream. Because you're gonna have to crack and crevice all this bedrock. If you got bedrock this close and you got large rocks sitting on the bedrock, you're gonna move those big rocks out of the way and get up underneath them. 
because the gold can't go down any further than the bedrock. So you move him out of the way and you dig down as far as you can into the bedrock and you sample there. You're going to need to bring a crowbar with you and you're going to need to get this up. You're going to get in there and you're going to scrape all this material out. You see that? It don't look like much, but it don't take much to make an ounce of gold now, does it? It's just a little vial. That's why it's important to bring your crevicing tools with you. The little screwdrivers and picks and the specialty tools. Because there's going to be times where you can't break the rock free. You get into these little tight cracks. You might even want to bring a small hand pump so you can suction out the cracks, fill them with water. And then use your suction pump to suck this out. You can even make one that you can use your mouth so you, you suck in and it acts like a straw and it pulls everything up into a small container. That way you don't suck it into your mouth. See how it's got these bands in it that's called nice? And all of a sudden you've got these little cord stringers running through here and you got this weird rock sitting in the middle of it. You see that? There, now you can see it a whole lot better with water on it. This is a xenolith, part of the original host rock or protolith. When this was cooling, this piece broke off from the protolith, the outside original country rock, and it entrapped itself inside of the magma chamber when this was cooling. And in doing so, it became a xenolith or a foreign rock. And you get these cord stringers on the side, and this is all caused from lateral secretion. Now this one used to be bigger, but as this granite was pushed together and squeezed, it also squeezed this, the xenolith. You can see how this granite has been squeezed into nice. You can see all the bands running through it. And it squeezed the heck out of him too. But the bedrock is smooth. It's not gonna trap no gold. So don't sample on bedrock that's smooth. Now, if you're finding gold in the creek and all of a sudden it stops, another thing you need to look for is these. These are called tributaries that feed into the main creek or river. A lot of the gold can be coming from one of these little side feeders. I've seen a lot of gold coming into larger streams and creeks off the side and people don't think about it. They just think there's gold in the river and that's it. You're going to go up and you're going to start sampling it on the way up. It's going to be hard going because you need to put the dirt in a bucket and carry it down to the river. Some guys get real creative and they create a zip line or they'll use two buckets and create a gravity zip line which is a lot more efficient. If you find gold, you need to find out the source, where it came from. And to do that, you just observe the gold. Use your jeweler's loop. Look at the texture of the gold. Is it getting bigger? Is it more coarse? Is it more angular in structure? Does it have any bits of the original host matrix attached to it? These are things you need to look for when you're out looking for gold. Because it's not just about finding the gold. You got to find out where it came from. Because if you can find a source, you might be able to retire, son. I want you to click the subscribe button and don't forget to click the bell icon that way you can be notified of future vids that come out because this is stuff you're going to need to know if you want to find gold. Mmm, cabins. Maybe they're miners' cabins. And they've got their gold mine around here somewhere. Mm, let's go take a 